let us look at a practical and very interesting way of performing phased array failure mechanisms. In this particular one, we are going to fail at the sub array level rather than individual elements like what we did in a previous example. We defined a variable called custom failure and we failed randomly a 10% of elements each time. But in this, per, in, the, in this current one, we are going to fail, we are going to define a sub array and then fail the entire sub array. In order to do that, we wrote a little bit of script to initiate that variable. So we have, what we have? We have the eight by eight, 64 element phased array and then we defined a variable called two by two section to fail. So we can see that if we have a 64 element square matrix, 64 element square matrix can be subdivided into 16 element, each element being a two by two matrix by itself. So each element two by two matrix represents a subarray. We initiated another variable with all 64 elements being ones. So if we have X, then X e represents entire phased array is active and nothing is failed. And we constructed another variable called Y as a cell variable of 16 two by two matrices. Now, if the Monte Carlo picks up this variable that is initiated here as a tune of some number, uh, any number it can be. Um, once Monte Carlo picks up a particular number that is used as an index for the Y and each member of Y as we know is a two by two matrix. So we are going to equate that two by two matrix to a two by two zeros matrix. That means this sub array, all the elements in this sub array have failed and the entire sub array has failed. From that we constructed a custom failures uh, by um, uh, reshaping the uh, cell to mat uh, as a uh, uh, 64 uh, element, one, one single matrix. Uh, so if we go into the Monte Carlo and then look at the variable what we have here is the two by two uh, uh, subsection, two by two subsection to fail or two by two section to fail. And the, the discrete list of probabilities that we chose are from one to 16, the list is one to 16 and the probabilities of each one of them are 100% um, uh, this is in percent, so 100% uh, multiplied by 1 by 16. So each failure of subarray happens with a probability of 1 over 16. Once we have done this setup, all that we have to do is to perform the Monte Carlo simulation using that variable. So as we can see here, uh, what it does is it will be uh, picking up an index between 1 and 16. Each time it picks up an index, it goes and then it makes the zeros of that particular subarray, all of them zeros, so the entire subarray is failed. And then it starts uh, finding the far field pattern for that. So in this process, we may or may not have exhausted all the 16 uh, failure mechanisms that can happen in this array. But if we, ex if we run a more number of Monte Carlo simulations, the, certainly we can capture all 16 failure mechanisms. So here if we see, we have in round 5, 12, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21, it uh, found a particular subarray failing and then the, that particular subarray is causing a lot of problem by raising its, um, uh, its um, uh, levels, this uh, side lobe levels quite well. So from this, we can find out from the knowing the round number, we can easily go and find out by a little bit of post-processing 
which of that sub arrays that failed and uh, uh, the, the characteristics, all the measurements we made on the far field pattern corresponding to that round can also be extracted. Once we know the uh, particular sub array failure, we can go and then fix that only that sub array. Another aspect that usually is done, uh, we are not demonstrating here, is that uh, if if there is a large phased array and then there are large number of sub arrays, then it may not be just one sub array failing at a time. It may be multiple sub arrays failing at a time. So we can set up system view to do any of these different ways of performing Monte Carlo simulation and since we have the basic infrastructure in place. Thank you.